What is going on guys, Kieran here and today we are taking a look at Transformers The Last Knight Premier Edition Deluxe Class Berserker. This guy is basically a reimagining of Crankcase from Dark of the Moon and he has some good points and some bad points but to be honest I think this is probably my favourite figure from the first wave, I really do like this guy. Nice Decepticon symbol on the side, I think it's on both sides, yep. Pretty nice painted windows, we've got lights on the uh, the top there. Nice Chevy symbol on the back and also got some painted lights. On the front here, another Chevy symbol. Underneath you have his weapon storage. He has the um, sort of like spike things that they have in Dark of the Moon, which is pretty damn cool. I, I, I really like them. They Again, the, uh, the Last Night figures tend to have pretty good weapons, so I'll give them that. The vehicle mode itself is decent enough. The only thing I have like I have a pretty big issue with is the way everything tabs together. Now this guy is I don't know, the transformation on this guy is pretty complex. It's pretty I don't know, it's just the way they the way they do it is just it's not right. These don't tab together very well. If these legs pieces could like tab together, if they could rotate another way around and just tab together, that'd be like much, much better. But he just falls apart quite easily and that's kind of a pain. Like when you're trying to adjust everything, it's very easy for these parts to pop out. So that is kind of a pain, but other than that, I think the vehicle mode is nice and solid. He does uh, compact down quite a bit, uh, so his mass shifting is pretty good. Here he is compared to Crankcase from Dark of the Moon. Now, hands down, Crankcase is the better figure for the vehicle mode. However, in the robot mode, this guy is quite surprising. I really do like this guy. The Dark of the Moon version is bigger. On the other side there, you can just see the differences between the two. Now, the Dark of the Moon version, I've always thought tabs together really, really nicely. Now, this guy is solid as hell, but the robot mode on this guy kind of falls short, whereas this guy's robot mode is absolutely fantastic. Now, getting this guy into robot mode isn't that much of a pain. It's just getting him back into the vehicle mode where everything just sort of falls apart. Like, like I said, these parts don't tab in properly. They sort of peg into the sides there, but that doesn't feel solid enough. And... Um, yeah, it, it can kind of be a pain, but anyway, to transform, what we're going to do is take these pieces and just fold these out to the side, like that. Fold that piece out, and you can lift this section up. Then what we're going to do is basically we're going to try and unpeg this entire back section and try and fold his legs out. Now, these sort of unpeg from there. There's some little tabs. Unpeg those, and they are kind of a pain to do, like that. Rotate his leg around. Fold his feet up, fold out his heel, and he's got chicken legs, so you've got to fold them all the way back for him to stand up. But there is one leg. Same thing again, rotate that back, fold this piece out, and uh, there are his, his chicken legs. I actually kind of like them, I think they're pretty cool. Um, take the back section, just sort of fold it up, this piece will just sort of sit on his ass there, like that. This section splits at the top here. Which will actually allow you, actually I, I probably missed a step out. Yeah, you have to fold this back section out probably before you do that. Fold all this up and then that will shift onto his back there. There's two little pegs and two little holes in the lights there and they just peg in nicely like that. And that just sort of makes his backpack sit nice and flush. Um, I do like how the kibble sort of sits in robot mode. It, um, it compacts quite well. Fold out his hand and this section fold back and you can fold out his little arm spike from under there. And just sort of lift his arm up a little bit, try and make him look a little bit more, a little bit more hunched. Do the same on the other side, rotate this around, flip up his little arm spike, fold out his hand and flip that piece around. And then just sort of try and pose him how you want him, because this guy has got some, he's got some range as to how you can actually pose him. But there is Berserker in his friggin' awesome looking robot mode. Now the robot mode is where this guy really shines. I love the way this guy looks. I think it's a much better rendition of the uh, the character model than uh, Dark of the Moon Crankcase. I love it. I think he looks awesome. He's probably my favourite out of the, uh, the new deluxes so far in terms of his robot design. I think he looks like a predator. He looks friggin cool. I really do like this guy. He's got some nice paint taps as well. He's got the nice cross on the chest there. Some nice red in the arms. Head sculpt looks very, very cool, very mean, very evil. Just to compare him with Crankcase, who I've actually literally just fucking broke, and I can't believe I did it. Um, I was transforming him, and his dread snapped off. Now, that's actually, like, fully snapped off. I don't know whether that's in focus or not. But, yeah, he's got a little ponytail sort of thing now, so that's cool, I guess. Here he is next to Crankcase, and you can just see how much of a better rendition of the robot mode this guy is. 
Um, he's very, very accurate to the CGI model because basically in the movie, in The Last Night, they just reuse a lot of character models and Berserker is a reuse of uh, Crankcase from Dark Moon. And it does, it, it, it represents the uh, the character model very, very well, much better than this. this I think the portion is just a little bit wonky on uh, this figure. But Berserker is very, very cool in the robot mode. I love how everything sort of shifts onto his back, nice and clean and flush. It's not like Barricade where it just sort of sits out there. This is It, it does uh, tab together quite nicely. It's quite solid as well. And the legs, despite him having pretty small looking feet, he stands really well. Now this guy can pose. So I was very, very impressed with him. Now, as for the weapons in the robot mode, he can hold them, but unfortunately, on mine, he, his hands are just so loose, they barely they barely tab in, and he can barely sort of hold them. But yeah, he can pop those in there, and he can hold those, but they also kind of sort of peg onto his back. Now, you can see this little hook sort of section just on there, and you can just sort of peg it onto his backpack, and they just sort of hang there. It's kind of naff, really. I wish it was like a proper actual tab for them to go in, but... Yeah, he can have them on his back if you so choose. I prefer to just leave them off to the side because I think I like to keep his robot mode nice and clean, sort of the way it is. Because I just I love to pose this guy on the shelf. Articulation wise, like I said, this guy can pose. He's pretty damn well articulated. Head is on a ball joint as I have just demonstrated because it popped off. Uh, these pieces do kind of get in the way and it just sort of kind of forces the uh, the ball joint out there. But that's kind of sucks. But whatever. And um, the shoulders can lift up and down so you can sort of make him, you know. Can make him more hunched if you want. I don't know. Just do what you want with that. Ball jointed shoulders. Can rotate up here. Bend at the elbow. The uh, hands are actually on a bit of a a pivot. So if you wanted to, you can make him point these sort of forward at people. But that's just that kind of due to the transformation. No waist articulation, but it can kind of do an ab crunch due to the transformation. Just the way that sort of sits. Kind of wish this would tab in, but it doesn't really. Um, but whatever. Ball jointed hips up here, can rotate at his uh, thigh, bend at the knee, and you can also rotate uh, his little ankle, or second knee, whatever you want to call it. So uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he can pull off some pretty mental poses. He kind of reminds me of General Grievous from that cartoon uh, Clone Wars series, where uh, he could just sort of grab things with his feet. Yeah, this guy can uh, can pull off some pretty interesting uh, poses. Now, potential spoiler warning, but then again, there's not really much to spoil regarding this guy. He was in the movie for about, I don't know, all of five seconds, and I'm not even joking. It would have been nice to see this guy, because his sort of bio implies that he is just a big old ball of rage. And, uh, yeah, like, nobody wants this guy out on the streets, basically. So, I would have liked to have seen him in action in the movie a little bit, but I guess we kind of saw him technically in Dark of the Moon, because he's the same fucking model, but whatever. But that is it for Decepticon Berserker. I think I've waffled on enough. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. I've got a couple more Transformers on the way to get reviewed for you guys. I've got the Voyager, Last Night, Optimus Prime. I have Deluxe Bumblebee and Deluxe Hot Rod ordered, so they should be here within the next week or so. So, uh, yeah, plenty of figures uh, for me to review that are going to be coming up, and I'm going to get some videos out for you guys in the next week or so. Uh, so cheers for watching, and I will see you then.